Hey everyone, this is Dan with another episode of my TSM videos, Taiwan Semiconductors. I bought TSM back in December of 2020 at $103 a share, and I still own those shares. And back in May of this year, I cautioned my subscribers about the short-term dip in TSM because of a couple of local events in Taiwan. Then on July 12th, as TSM broke above the $120 resistance, I bought more shares and tweeted my subscribers about a trade. Now I believe we might be seeing yet another buy opportunity for TSM. Why? That's because TSM has been up 14% in the last 10 days because of the announcement of price increases on the chips. I believe it will break through another resistance level pretty soon. There are other bullish news about TSM. Let's get into the details. First of all, let's review my price target set in the video that I posted on July 12th. I said at the time that my target was $140 a share to be achieved by the end of October 2021. On that day, TSM closed at 122.63. As of yesterday, TSM closed at 123.97. It only moved up a little bit because of the various issues that we will discuss in the next few minutes. Will I be increasing or lowering my price target? We'll talk about that in the next few minutes. In my last video, I talked about a few major events that have been affecting the TSM price. They were the drought in Taiwan, where TSM has almost all their manufacturing facilities. And I talked about the recent surge of COVID cases in Taiwan. And then we talk about the announcement of their second quarter earnings that happened on July 15. And then finally, the capital spending concerns. Uh, so today, the drought problem has been resolved in Taiwan because of more rain that happened. And the COVID cases are very much under control in Taiwan. The second quarter earnings turn out to be very good. Then what remains is the capital spending concerns. We'll talk about that extensively in the next few minutes. If you like what you've seen so far, I'd like to encourage you to click the like, subscribe, and notification buttons so that you'll be notified when I publish my next video. Also, it'll encourage me to produce more videos like this in the future. Thank you very much. Let's continue. According to Investor Business Daily, the July 15 earnings announcement of TSM was very good and matched the estimates of major analysts. However, the stock price did not quite go up. It went pretty much flat for the next month. Why? We will talk about that later. We mentioned previously that TSM announced that they would be spending $100 billion over the next three years of growth capacity to address the worldwide semiconductor shortage. And that's the reason of the capital spending concerns. On June 20th, Morgan Stanley downgraded the stock. That was a severe blow to the stock price. They lowered the price target from 655 Taiwan dollars a share to $580 Taiwan per share, and that's equivalent to $120 a share in the U.S. market. And since that time, 120 has been a very strong resistance level for TSM stock. We'll look at the charts later on. As of July 12th, I predicted that the TSM EPS would be impressive, even with the increase of capital spending expenditures. Of course, the announcement of the second quarter earnings came out on July 15, three days after my prediction. And sure enough, my prediction was correct, except the concern about capital expenditures pretty much overweighed the positive news about the second quarter earnings. And that's why the stock price has been fairly depressed ever since that time. And then on July 12th, in the meanwhile, because the price broke above the resistance level of 120, remember the 120 was the Morgan Stanley level, it went up to about 121. That's when I bought more shares. Actually, I bought the shares at $121.30. Of course, as of today, I'm seeing a small paper gain. At this point, I'd like to also remind you to subscribe to my Twitter account. And the name is Dan Market L, so that you can receive live updates on some of my trades. Let's continue. And then as of August 25th, it was reported that TSM was raising the price for their most advanced chips by up to 10%. And more importantly, they are raising the prices of their older chips by up to 20%. And that will significantly increase their profit margin as well as revenues. 
There is a very bullish piece of news about TSM. Apple and Intel supposedly are going to adopt the TSM 3 nanometer chip technology. And the 3 nanometer chips are reportedly going to be introduced as early as next year, 2022. In the meanwhile, it's been reported that Samsung is unlikely to be ready to produce the 3 nanometer chips until 2023. Let's take a closer look at the capital expenditures and depreciation expenses. In the TSM 2020 10F statement, which is the equivalent of the 10K statement of an American company, which corresponds to the annual report, they mentioned that they would be depreciating their assets depending on the different types, which is very similar to the American standard. For example, they would be depreciating land improvements over the course of 20 years, buildings 10 to 20 years, machinery and equipment five years, and office equipment five years. That means even though they're spending $100 billion in the next three years, not all $100 billion will be depreciated in the income statement in the next three years. Some of the spending items will be stretched out for over 10 to 20 years. If you look at their revenue by technology, again, that's from their second quarter earnings conference in the presentation made by the TSM management. You can see that their most advanced chips, the seven nanometer chips and five nanometer chips occupy 50% of their revenues. And then the older chips occupy the other 50%. And that's a very significant chart. We will be referring to the chart later on. Here, I look at their total revenues for the last few years since 2017 on an annual basis. The numbers are from Yahoo Finance and they are stated in thousands of Taiwan dollars. And the translation between Taiwan dollars and US dollars is about 27 to 30 Taiwan dollars to one US dollar. If you look at the total revenue and then looking at the stated reconcile depreciation that's again from yahoo finance and the net income for these years then you can subtract the net income and depreciation from the total revenues and arrive at this other catch-all bucket i call the other expenses with these numbers i can calculate the ratios and it turned out that the reconciled depreciation has been running at about 27 25 28 percent of the total revenue since they've been spending aggressively on capital investment starting almost six months to a year ago, and then I went to the quarterly reports from Yahoo Finance starting from the second quarter of 2020 until the second quarter of 2021. And out of these four quarters, when you see the progression of their percentage of depreciation expenses as compared to the total revenues, it's been going up from 23% to 27% to 28%. Even though it's been increasing, which is logical, but it's not really shooting up dramatically. And of course, a lot of that is because of the smoothing effect of making some of the depreciation over the course of 10 to 20 years. In the meanwhile, the company has also been increasing their sales and profit margin. We'll be talking about that later on. If you look at TSM's debt to equity ratio, of course, the smaller the ratio, the better. You can see that TSM, as represented by the black line, indeed has been going up a little bit. But compared to the industry, some of their peers in the industry, TSM is actually in pretty good shape. For example, Intel is the green line here, definitely has a higher debt to capital ratio. That means TSM actually is on better footing than Intel when it comes to debt. And then NVIDIA also has a higher ratio than TSM. The industry average also is higher. The only company on this chart that's lower than TSM is Advanced Micro Devices, which I also have been following and posting videos on. In other words, TSM so far still looks pretty good when it comes to debt to capital ratio. Let's look at the cash flow. This is from Yahoo Finance. If you look at the cash flow since 2017, the cash flow ran between 249 billion Taiwan dollars to 251, and then 145, that was a low year, to 305 in 2020. And the trailing 12 month figure ending the second quarter of this year was 256, a little bit decreased from 2020, but the deterioration was not dramatic. 
and you can see where they got the money from. The operating cash flow primarily from the profit increased dramatically compared to previous years, as you might expect, because they've been increasing prices on their chips. So it went up from 2017's figure of 585 billion Taiwan dollars to 863 billion dollars, and that that's a very significant increase. And then they have financing cash flow of 35 billion dollars. That means they borrow money, although the borrowing is not very high compared to their operating cash flow. And overall, they are on very solid footing on cash flow as well. Definitely, all in all, TSM is still a very well-managed company with awesome products. This is from the management presentation. When they announced the second quarter earnings, they provided the guidance for the third quarter earnings. They said the revenues would be between U.S. $14.6 billion and $14.9 billion dollars. We'll be referencing this set of figures pretty soon, and most importantly, the operating profit margin will be between 38.5% and 40.5%. We'll be referring to this set of figures also in the next few minutes. Let's look at the net income. Before we do that, I'd like to bring back this pie chart we showed previously, with the more advanced chip occupying 50% of the sales and the older chips at another 50% of the sales. And of course, the price increase is actually higher. In the older segment, up to about 20%, whereas on this more advanced segment, it's also up to about nine, ten percent. With that knowledge, I pull up the historical earning figures from Yahoo Finance from 2020 to 2021 on a quarterly basis, and then based on the latest quarter, I increase their revenues by 10% and try to project their third quarter earnings. And I arrive at 409 billion Taiwan dollars. That corresponds to 14.6 billion U.S. dollars, and that matches pretty well with the management guideline of 14.6 to 14.9 billion dollars U.S. And then for net income, what I did was that I used a net margin prediction from management of between 38.5 and 40.5 percent. So I used the middle figure of 39 percent. So based on the revenue here and a 39% net margin, I arrive at the net income of 159 billion Taiwan dollars, which is equivalent to 5.7 billion dollars US for the third quarter. That's for net income. Let's look at the sales and EPS trends. This is from the Better Investing website, the SSG Stock Selection Guide database. When you plot all the sales, you can see it's being Steadily increasing, and the slope of this dotted line projecting into 2026 is at 19% annual growth rate. Very impressive. The EPS has been growing very steadily as well. The solid line is the historical EPS, following a very nice positive slope going upwards. Projecting the future, this dotted line is at 16% annual growth. If you look at the growth in the last four years, is actually much better than that. So 16% annual growth is a very conservative estimate, and we'll be using that number later on for calculating the stock price of TSM. Now let's look at my own valuation of the company. First, I look at the figures for the major leading semiconductor companies in the world. TSM is here at a trailing P/E ratio of 32. And Yahoo gives them a forward P/E ratio of 26, and the peg ratio is only at 1.87, which is pretty reasonable. And based on these figures and my prior calculations, I decided to use an average forward P/E ratio of 29, which is reasonable compared to the P/E ratios of these other companies. And also, I decided to use the projected earning growth of 16% per year. Remember in the preceding slide. 16% came from this chart, which is definitely very conservative. Then, based on these assumptions, I also started to look at their quarterly net income. Remember, in the last couple of pages, I calculated the net income of 5.7 billion dollars for the third quarter of 2021. I assume that they will generate the same net income for the fourth quarter. Actually, most likely, the net income for the fourth quarter will be even higher. Than a net income from the third quarter, but I want to be conservative, so I assume the same. And then we have the historical net income figures from the second and the first quarter. Add them all up, then the net income for 2021 becomes 
billion dollars US. And I carry this number into here, the net income for 2021. And then based on the current net income stock price PE ratio, I am able to calculate the projected stock price for 2021. And that's $119 a share, which is just about where we are. Now, based on the EPS growth of 16% and PE ratio of 29, I am able to calculate the stock prices for 2022 and 2023. And they are 138, 160. And from this range of figures, I like to set a forecast of $140 a share to be achieved by the end of November 2021. Actually, I believe the stock price will go up much higher than that by year end. I will adjust my price target later on as the events start unfolding about TSM. So please stay tuned. Let's look at the other professional analyst opinion. We'll compare today's figures with the figures back from July 12, 2021, when I published my last video. The price back then was 122.63. Today is 123.97 move up just a teeny bit, and my target is $140 a share to be achieved by the end of November 2021. Yahoo Business pretty much kept everything the same, except they lower the average target by just $1 from $140 to $139. Louis Nevalier actually downgraded them from B to C, which is a hold rating, primarily because TSM has been so flat in the last two or three months. That's a quantitative aspect of Lewis Nevalier's rating. TipRanks.com, however, increased the average target from 127 to 131 and maintained a high target at 150 and maintained their rating at moderate buy. CM Money likes the stock, gives them a buy rating, didn't change any target at all. The Street.com lowered their rating from buy A to A minus, and the target actually went up from 154 to 156. Therefore, my target of 140 is pretty much between the average and the high ratings among these rating entities. And that's why I'm very comfortable about a 140 target. Let's look at the charts. First of all, let's look at the daily chart for the last year. The candlestick chart is TSM. As we can see, TSM went up by 57% in the last year. Certainly very impressive. The semiconductor ETF SMH went up by about 60%, actually performing a little bit better than TSM. And the broad market as represented by QQQ and SPY went up by about 34%. Definitely TSM outperformed the broad market in the last year. This is the daily chart for the last six months. It's not so good for TSM. TSM went up by only 7.25%, whereas QQQ went up by 25%. SPY by 20% and SMH, the semiconductor ETF, by 23%. As you can see, TSM has been pretty much flat since April. If you look at the last 10 days, all of a sudden TSM woke up. It took a jump here on August 25th. That's when the news came out about the latest round of price increases. And certainly the price jumped up on that news. And they have been up. 12.54% in the last 10 days. SMH was up only 5.9%, whereas QQQ was up only 3%, and SPY only 1.8%. Definitely, TSM outperformed the board market in the last 10 days. My prediction is that it will continue to go up in the next couple of months. Let's take a closer look of the chart on a daily basis using the various indicators here. From this chart, we can see that the price has been following this very tight horizontal channel. The RSI indicator has been getting up to about 70, which is to the point of almost being overboard. And that's why this price might be going horizontal for the next few days and might even dip a little bit before it picks up momentum again. On the DMI indicator, we see a bullish buy signal starting about 10 days ago. And the MACD also flashed a buy signal about 10, 12 days ago. Actually, that's starting from August 25th, when the news about the price increase came out. Let's take a closer look at the daily chart. Here, we can see the $120 resistance level. That was a Morgan Stanley prediction, remember? 
And that's actually one of the lines on the Fibonacci retraction diagram. I'll talk about that later on. The price was struggling to break through this level for several times. And finally, it broke through this level four days ago, and it's now marching up towards this next level of resistance at 125, which was achieved around July 15, 16 or so. It is critical for us to see whether it will penetrate 125. If it gets above 125 in the next two, three days, I will most likely buy more shares because that will be a very bullish sign. On the other hand, if it starts going down, I might sell some of the shares that I bought back on July 12th to lock in some of my short-term profits. And I'll still be holding some shares for the long term. In the meanwhile, on the RSI indicator, again, we are seeing RSI being fairly high at about 70. It's almost overboard. And DMI is still bullish. MACD is still bullish. Let's look at the support and resistance levels. I drew this Fibonacci retraction diagram using the maximum point achieved on February 16, 2021 at about $142.20. And I use this point on August 20th at about $107 as a minimum point, drew the Fibonacci retraction diagram. From that, I see resistance at 125, which is the Fibonacci 50% level and also the upper Bollinger Band. So that'll be a very strong resistance. It's very important that the price breaks through this resistance before it can go up any further. And that, for me, will be a buy signal when the price does penetrate that level and get support, actually, from that level. Then the next level up will be 129, which is Fibonacci 38%. Next level up, 134, Fibonacci 23%. And then finally, the Fibonacci 0% 142, which is the all-time high achieved back in February. For support, I see the next support level at 120. That was the Morgan Stanley target level. It was a strong resistance level. Now it could potentially turn into a support level. The next level down will be 117, which is the middle of the Bollinger Band. The next level down 115, Fibonacci 78%. And coincidentally, that's the 50, 100 day, and 200 day moving average. All three lines are converging to that point. So if the price ever drops near that point, that'll be a very strong support level. Then the next level down will be 107, which is Fibonacci 100%. And that's this level. This is a recap of my price target, which is $140 to be achieved by the end of November 2021. And as of yesterday, the market closed at $123.97. What are my strategies? First of all, I bought shares on July 12th at $121.30. I'm seeing a small profit now. Actually, as I mentioned, I bought my first batch of shares back in December of 2020. And definitely, I'm seeing a good profit on that. I would buy more shares if the price gets above 125 resistance and start getting support at that level. And I will continue to keep some shares for the long term because I'm bullish about TSM for the long term. I will sell when the price drops at key resistance levels or when adverse news breaks out. I'll be swing trading half of my shares and keeping half of my shares for the long term. And then I will buy when price goes up at key support levels or when positive news breaks out. If you like what you've seen so far, I'd like to suggest that you click the like, subscribe, and notification button. Thank you again. Let's continue. At this point, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to my Twitter account in addition to subscribing to my YouTube channel. And that's why you can get my latest updates on my trades as well as any new developments with regard to TSM as well as some of the other stocks that I analyze. As usual, I will very much welcome your comments questions and suggestions that you can send by way of my Twitter account as well as my YouTube channel. I have been having some very interesting discussions with my subscribers. At this point, I'd like to remind you that I'm not a financial advisor. I share my analyses and stock trading strategies for educational purpose only. If you want to buy and sell shares, you should make your own decisions and you should definitely consult with your financial advisors before you do so. This about wraps up my video for now. I will chat with you again in the next few days. In the meanwhile, I'd like to wish you the very best of luck with your financial investments.